So today we will discuss a new topic and that is the uh, fluid dynamics. The fluid dynamics is very important in sedimentology. We will study the laminar flow. turbulent flow, Raynaud number, Shroud number, and then the flow regime. The sediments which are produced by various processes of weathering, they are transported by various mechanisms. Either they are transported by laminar flow or they are by transported by turbulent flow. What will the nature of flow? The flow will be laminar or the flow will be turbulent. That is decided on the basis of Raynaud number. And uh, the sediments they interact with the fluid in different ways. Sometimes the sediments they interact and they form the lower flow regime, they form certain bed forms. Again they interact with the sediments, the fluid interact with the sediments under upper flow regime and then they also form different bed forms. The flow regime will be lower or the flow regime will be upper that is decided on the basis of frog number. So any environment either fluvial environment or glacial environment or eolian environment, basically they transport these sediment from the place of origin to the place of deposition. And if any environment is not capable of transporting the sediments, then deposition takes place. So deposition is nothing, but that is the incompetency of the surface process, that is the incompetency of the natural environment that is incompetency of the sedimentary environment to further transport the sediments. So we will discuss each and every aspect of the fluid ionics, the laminar flow, the turbulent flow, the Raynaud number, the Froude number and the flow regime. So if these are the sediments, we need minimum energy to transport these finer sediments. We need maximum energy to transport the coarser sediments and we need intermediate energy to transport the medium sized sediments. So which type of sediments will be transported by the any sediment environment or any fluid flow? That is, that will be decided by the energy of the environment as well as by the availability of the sediments. So we need some energy to transport this sediment or this sediment or this sediment. So the minimum energy which is required to uplift the sediment and to transport the sediment that is known as entrainment velocity. So this entrainment velocity is very very important because it is the minimum velocity which is required to uplift the sediments as well as to transport the sediments. So what is the laminar flow? In the case of laminar flow, this is laminar flow. So different layers of the flow, they are moving parallel to each other. Different layer of the flow, they are moving in the same general direction. Different layers of the flow, they are never coming in contact with each other, means no mixing is taking place. And if the flow is laminar, it means the velocity of the flow is, is low. And the surface on which the flow is taking place, that is smooth. In the case of turbulent flow,
different layers of the flow they are moving in different direction different layers in different direction and because of, because the layers are moving in different direction they are not moving parallel to each other therefore mixing will take place So the laminar, what is the difference between the laminar flow and turbulent flow is that laminar flow in the case of laminar flow different layers of the flow are moving parallel to each other, number one. Number two, the velocity is low. Number three, the surface on the which the flow is moving is smooth. Number four, no mixing will take place because different layers they are moving parallel to each other and therefore the flow will be heterogeneous. Whereas in the case of turbulent flow, different layers of the flow, they are moving in different direction. The velocity is generally high. And the surface on which the flow is moving, that is rough. Because mixing will take place, therefore the flow will be homogeneous. Flow. When the flow will be laminar or when the flow will be turbulent, it is decided on the basis of Raynaud number. What is Raynaud number? Raynaud number R E is equal to U L upon nu. Sir O Raynaud, he conducted a series of experiments in 1883 to identify that when the flow will be laminar and when the flow will be turbulent. And according to Renard, he proposed a formula R is equal to UL upon nu, where nu is the viscosity of the fluid, U is the inertial velocity of the fluid, and L is the length of the cross section through which fluid is moving. In, in general, in a very easy sense, we can define that Renard number is equal to inertial forces upon viscous forces. It means Raynaud number will be high when the viscosity will be low and the Raynaud number will be low when viscosity will be high. Raynaud number will be high when inertial forces or velocity or the length will be high and Raynaud number will be low when the inertial velocity and the length of the cross section through which fluid is moving is, is low. It means when Raynaud number is less than 500 the flow is laminar and when the Raynaud number is more than 2000 the flow will be turbulent. So we will have to always remember that if Raynaud number is less than 500 the flow is laminar, if Raynaud number is more than 2000 the flow is turbulent and in between 500 to 2000 the flow is transitional. So this is the laminar flow and the turbulent flow and the Raynaud number and we know that when the flow will be laminar, when the flow will be turbulent, what are the various characteristics of the fluid which are important to make the laminar flow into the turbulent flow or the turbulent flow into the uh, laminar flow. Then the second uh, point is the flow regime and the flow number. Cloud number is again a dimensionless parameter and Froud number FR is equal to inertial forces upon gravitational forces is equal to U upon under root G D where U is the inertial velocity of the fluid, G is the gravitational force and D is the length of the cross section through which fluid is moving. So if flow number is, is equal to 1, the flow is known as critical. If flow number is greater than 1, the flow is known as supercritical. And if flow number is less than 1, the flow is known as subcritical. When the flow number is less than 1, means flow number is less than 1, that is known as subcritical flow. This is the situation of lower flow regime lower flow regime when the flow number is less than 1 
means the gravitational forces are higher than the inertial forces. Proud number is less than one means gravitational forces are stronger than the inertial forces. This, this is the situation of lower flow regime, this is the situation of subcritical flow, means flow will be low. And you can just look at the formula that proud number is equal to inertial forces upon gravitational forces and if proud number is less than one, it means gravitational forces are higher than the inertial forces means the forces which are trying to stop the movement of the fluid, they are stronger than the forces which are trying to move the fluid. So there are two situations. Number one, the inertial forces which are trying to move the fluid, whereas the gravitational forces which are trying to stop the movement of the fluid. And in this situation, the forces in the subcritical flow are lower flow regime. In this situation, because how number is less than one, means gravitational forces are stronger than the inertial forces. It means the forces which are trying to stop the movement of the fluid, they are stronger than the forces which are trying to move the fluid. As a result, the wave will move up. This is very, very important that in this lower flow regime or in the subcritical flow, the wave will move up. And if you just look at the river, at a number of places, you can observe it visually. Then the second situation, when crowd number is greater than one, means gravitational forces are smaller than the inertial forces. This is known as supercritical flow. And in this situation, because the forces which are trying to stop the movement of the fluid, that is smaller than the forces which are trying to move the fluid, in this situation, the wave will move downstream. So this is very, very important uh, in the case of flow. So there are two types of flow regime. One is known as upper flow regime, and the second is known as lower flow regime. And when the flow will be upper or when the flow will be lower, it is decided on the basis of Proud number. If proud number is less than one, that is lower flow regime, and if proud number is greater than one, that is upper flow regime. In the lower flow regime, generally the velocity is low, and in the upper flow regime, generally the velocity is, is high. So there is one more very important term, and that is known as bed forms. Ripple mark is a bed form. You must know in sand dunes, they are bed forms. The anti dunes, they are bed forms. The plain beds, they are bed forms. So what are bed forms? Bed forms are nothing but they are the geomorphic unit which are formed by the interaction of the sediment, if these are the sediments, when they come in contact with the fluid. And as soon as the sediment will come in contact with the fluid, the first bed form which is formed is like this, the sediments will be, dip. they will move like this and they will be deposited like this and this is known as plain bed. So the first bed form which is formed under the lower flow regime is known as lower plane bed. Then with the slight increase in velocity, the, the sediments will move and they will form like this. What is this? This is ripple marks. It means the second bed forms under lower flow regime are the ripple marks. With further increase in velocity, the amplitude and the wavelength of the ripple marks will increase and sand dunes will be formed. With further increase in velocity of the fluid, the amplitude and the wavelength of the ripples and the sand dunes will further increase and they will form the mega ripples. So in the lower flow regime, the important bed forms which are formed are lower plane bed, ripple marks, then sand dunes and then mega ripples. With further increase in velocity, the flow regime will change the flow number will increase from 
one and the flow will be under upper flow regime. And with further increase in velocity, the sand dunes and the nether ripples, they will again become the flat and this is known as upper plane beds. This is the first bed form of upper flow regime. With further increase in velocity, anti dunes are formed. Why they are known as anti dunes? Because number one, dunes are formed in lower flow regime, whereas anti dunes are formed in upper flow regime. In the case of dunes, the crust and trough of the dunes they are not synchronized with the crust and trough of the waves. Whereas in the case of anti dunes, the crust and trough of the dunes, they are in phase with the crust and trough of the waves. That's why they are known as anti dunes. So in the lower flow regime, the important bed forms, bed forms are nothing, but they are the geomorphic features which are formed by the interaction of the sediment with the fluid. Important bed forms which are formed in lower flow regime means subcritical flow, means when flow number is less than one are lower plane bed, ripple marks, sand dunes and mega ripples. Whereas the bed forms which are formed in upper flow regime in supercritical flow, in upper flow regime when flow number is more than one, they are the upper plane bed and the Next time we will discuss another topic. Thank you.